What's up, Guru Nation? Let's demystify clinical research. Hey, Guru Nation, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share. It really means a lot to me. We're going to get into study startup. But before we get into any of that, I want to give a shout out to my sponsors. The first one is Versatrel. Speaking of study startup, you start using Versatrel from study startup and onwards. Matter of fact, even before startup on the feasibility section, Versatrel is absolutely free. Link underneath. It's going to save your life. I'm telling you as a site, it's going to make your life a lot easier. Absolutely free. Link underneath. Second one is Inato. Huge shout out to Inato. Also free. In order to get the study startup, you got to actually get a study first. So you can get studies from Monado for free, no strings attached. And they actually walk you through, they coach you through the feasibility. They, they really inform you of what the protocol is about before you get into it. I declined way more studies on Inato than I would had I not been using Inato and just found the study on my own, like through my DSCSI network. This is a great complimentary service, absolutely free and not -o. Finally, Creo for eSource and eReg. Most of the study startup stuff is regulatory. So this is a place to put your regulatory documents. And then we're going to glaze into the uh, source as well. So Creo is amazing. Uh, go check it out. Link underneath as well. Thank you to my sponsors. Study startup. I have a real study, a real life study where... I'm going through the the real email I got from a CRO and they're requesting various items from us as a site. So these are important because if you're a job seeker, there's a lot of jobs, there's a lot of positions right now about study startup specialist, in-house CRA, um, remote site monitor, a lot of these things at the CRO and sponsor level, but really at the CRO level are about study startup. And a lot of these are like more entry level roles. So you're going to be dealing with like in this case, the email I got from this one person is a study startup specialist. Uh, he's actually a CRA, but there is a study startup specialist we are working on where they're asking us a bunch of questions about our site. And this is mind you, after we got selected. So you have already been selected at this point, and then you get the study startup email or a packet. So here's the study startup email we got the day we got notified that we were selected, which happened to have been the same email on a recent study. Dear Dr. Harris and staff, that's my PI, thank you for your interest. I am pleased to inform you that your site has been selected. We are working for, looking forward to working with you on the study. In close, please find the documents we need, protocol specific and otherwise. So in this, we had the actual protocol. In this case, it was version one. We had the protocol signature page. Please have the PI sign this signature. Uh, page and then we have the site information form then we have a 1572 form then we have the IRB because we use a central IRB so we had the IRB instructions for submitting our site applications then we had uh, uh, further instructions with that same IRB in this case it's Advara quick notes for how to set up your your site submitting your site for review and registering if you're a new site to this irb registering it for the first time we were not if you are a new site you will have to register with the irb then a w9 form for the site which is for tax purposes for the sponsor and a site information sheet to collect other staff and access needs so let's go through all these things one by one in detail uh, this is for study startup so the first one and what's also not listed here but was in a separate email was the financial disclosure form as well as the investigator brochure and the investigator brochure signature page so let's go through these things right now the protocol should be pretty obvious what it is you need the latest version of it you also need the protocol signature page once you get that signature page, have your PI sign it, send it back 
to whoever requested it of you, whether it's just emailing it to them or in some studies it's putting it in a portal or in other studies it's um, putting it into uh, a security email. Whatever the case may be, they're going to give you instructions for how to do that. In this case, it, there is a CRO specific portal that they require you to use. And so we get all these documents, we get the right staff to sign off on it, and then we upload it to a portal. So the protocol, it's there. Now, the minute you start receiving these things, you gotta start building your investigative site file. So whether it's Creo, which we use for ereg and eSource, or whether it's someone like Viva Site Vault, which we also use. We use Viva Site Vault at our site specifically for study startup because it's free. Uh, whatever the case may be, you put, you start keeping your investigator site file from day one. Now, sometimes they'll send you a physical investigator site file. Um, other times they won't, and they'll have you make your own. Whatever the case is, you got to follow your own site SOPs. In our case, it's all digital. So we get these documents, we upload them, we digitally sign them, uh, and then we move on. So the protocol make sure you file it and make sure you start keeping track of the different versions. Then the protocol signature page, only the PI needs to sign it and it's the current version. It should be the same version that the protocol is that you're using. The site information form is basically this form where they ask you information about your site. What locations are you going to be using? And by the way, the site information form is basically the same thing that goes on the 1572. So what's the main locations of the study? Are you using a central lab or are you using a local lab? Most sites are able to use the study specified central labs, but some sites have to use local labs. Other studies require the use of a local lab because there is no central labs. So whatever that is, you need to put your laboratory info. If it's a central lab, that information is already pre-populated for you. The next thing is, are you able to use a central IRB or a local IRB? If it's central IRB, like most sites are able to use, um, only academic medical centers and teaching hospitals are under the jurisdiction of a local IRB usually, so then they would have to put their own IRB information in there. But for the central IRB, uh, it's already pre-populated for you. In this case, it's Advara. The next section is the sub-investigators. So who's the sub-investigator going to be? These are usually other MDs, other clinicians, nurse practitioners, people involved with the study that are not coordinators, although some of the times the sponsor and CRO requires that the coordinators also be listed in box six of the 1572 form for sub-investigators. Then you need things like your IATA certificate for these staff. You need your CLIA waiver or your CLIA license, which is the lab uh, certificate or the lab waiver. You, you might be asking yourself, well, why if we're using a central lab, do we need a CLIA waiver? Well, you need one because you're actually collecting the blood samples there and you're collecting urine. And even if you are just analyzing urine like with a pregnancy test or or a dipstick for the urinalysis, that's still enough to require a CLIA waiver, at least a CLIA waiver. Uh, consult with your local authorities in regards to this matter. I'm not an attorney. okay. Uh, but those are things that you will have to put on your site information form. Then you also need, and, and we're going to get into more of the essential documents in a little bit, such as CVs and medical licenses and good clinical practice trainings. Now, sometimes the sponsor is going to require and demand, regardless of how recently your staff has done good clinical practice training, some of them are going to require that you do it again through their vendor of choice. So unfortunately, all your staff is going to have to do good clinical practice training Again, regardless of whether you did it or not, if that sponsor or CRO requests that you do it. The next thing that you're going to need are those financial disclosure forms. So for these financial disclosure forms, all the sub-investigators listed in box six have to fill out this financial disclosure form where the protocol is listed on the top and then you disclose 
based on the sponsor, any financial interest that these sub investigators or principal investigators have in the outcome of the study, meaning they either own stock up to a certain above a certain amount of dollars or they are employees or they receive other incentives from the sponsor. You got to disclose those on these forms. These forms are very specific as well. So you got to fill out a financial disclosure form for everybody in box six of the 1572 form. The next thing that we discuss is the investigator brochure. So this investigator brochure, if you ever go to a pharmacy and get your medication or even sometimes over the counter, those little insert packets that you get when you get your new meds, that's an investigator brochure. It's just extremely truncated for size. But in these studies, these things are like 200, 300 pages long. All the known information about that particular investigational product is in there from side effects to PK to PD to all the biostats, all the previous studies they've done with the investigator brochure, with that investigational product is listed in the investigator brochure. Then it's the investigator brochure signature page or acknowledgement of receipt that only the PI needs to sign. So they got to acknowledge that they received it again. When you start getting these things, you got to start putting them away. Put them in your your ISF, whether it's a physical binder or whether it's an electronic ISF like Creo or Viva Vault. Start keeping these things organized. You don't want to just leave them floating around on your desktop because then you're going to forget where it is and which version you're on. You need to be organized. This is what the investigator site file is all about. It's an extremely important part of study startup. The W-9 form for tax purposes is the name of the site and the EIN number, which is the, it's, it's like a social security number for a business. That's what the EIN number is. Then the site information sheet. So this is to collect for all staff members. So now you're not just talking about the PI and sub investigators. You're talking about the coordinators the research assistants, anyone involved with the study that's soon to go on the delegation of authorities log, which is interestingly not a part of study startup. We're going to get into that when we talk about site initiation visits, but just know that the delegation of authorities log also goes in the investigator site file. And so now anyone that needs access to any portals, whether it's IRT, whether it's IRB, whether it's the patient reported outcomes portal, whether it's the electronic data capture system, whatever the case may be, patient recruitment system, there's usually a dozen portals on average per given study. And this is again why I love Versatrel. They help keep all these portals organized. They even have a password saver for the user, and it's a collaborative workspace to where one coordinator can enter the link, another one can enter another link, and then everyone has access to the same information, except of course for the passwords. That's user specific, but these portals can get out of hand, especially when you're doing multiple studies. Well, if it's eight to 12 portals per study with different passwords, different links, imagine if you're a coordinator that's running five studies. Well, you've got like 40 to 60 links with different passwords and there's no way you can keep track of this. So Versatrel is there. You should start using Versatrel from your study startup. So we mentioned the protocol signature page, the site information form, which will help populate the 1572. CVs for the principal investigators and all sub investigators on the 1572. Uh, you've got to make sure those are recent and signed and dated. I know a lot of sites can forget to update those. It's important. Medical licenses for the PIs and all sub investigators, whether they're a nurse practitioner, whether they're an MD, whether they're a DO, whether they're a PA, whether they're an RN, you need the license and make sure that they're not expired licenses. IRB approval. We've briefly touched on it. In this study, we're using Advara. Quite honestly, all the central IRBs are the same. It's the site's job to make sure they get in the IRB, make, make sure first they have access to the IRB portal. That's number one. And by they, meaning at least the coordinator, because usually the coordinators are the ones doing this. Then they need to fill out that initial IRB application 
review form, which we're probably going to be a separate video in and of itself, just going through one of those. I'll probably do that one with Chris so you guys can see how to do it. It'll be like a walkthrough. Uh, then you got to start populating the informed consent form as well. So when you do your IRB approval for your site, that's probably a 30 minute process if you know what you're doing. It will start asking you to populate your informed consent form. Now, there's certain things you might not have the answers to. For example, how much do you compensate a patient per visit? Well, that's where it leads us into, and I said we're just going to glance over it, the budget and contract. So it's probably not the coordinator at the site that's negotiating the budget and contract or finalizing it. Matter of fact, someone else is probably concurrently while the coordinator is working on study startup negotiating the contract and budget but it's important that the coordinator communicates to whomever this person is at the site that's negotiating the budget hey what are we offering patients per visit and then you need it you need that information for your informed consent form and you need it for your irb application so try to get that information even if you don't have the budget and contract finalized somebody at your site should be able to provide you with some guidance so that's really study startup it's not that complicated it gets complicated the more investigators you have listed on box six so the more sub eyes you have and then all those portals I mentioned, which are all study specific, by the way, some may only have six portals, others might have 12. All of those, unfortunately, are going to require separate trainings. And then some studies also have protocol training where the sponsor has selected a vendor. It's usually Firecrest is like probably the most popular one. Well, where they will do a, like a virtual protocol training for each staff member. So the sites, these things are important because the sites will not get activated, meaning you won't get to SIV, site initiation visit, until all the staff members, relevant staff members, have completed all their trainings, whether it's for the protocol itself or for the vendors, and these require certificates to be generated. So that study startup, the paperwork's the easy part. The hard part is keeping track of all the sub eyes, and then the really hard part for the CRCs and the study startup specialists, to be honest with you, are getting those vendor trainings done by all staff members. And I mean all of them, because in this room, there's a sub investigator here right now, and we're on a study startup pretty soon, and he's gonna have to do some trainings as well. So the coordinator has to keep track of all this, just like the name implies, you're coordinating different people to do different things in order to get to the next step, which is site initiation visit. Now, I said I would mention eSource just briefly. At this point of the process, it would be nice if you're the coordinator, if you're proactive enough, to ask the sponsor for EDC screenshots so that you can start preparing the source. Now, if you've got a little extra cash as a site, and you're using someone like Creo, which we use, they have a marketplace where you can purchase the templates, the source templates for that study, because one of the benefits of being with Creo is they have a bunch of sites using it, so they probably have somebody that is capable of making the source for just about every study that's out there. So either you can make it on your own for free, ask for EDC screenshots, you probably want the EDC screenshots anyways, even if you ask Creo to make them for you, just to double check. Uh, and then that's it. So make sure you get all these things. Make sure you keep these things organized. Make sure you get all your staff completing all their trainings. This requires multiple follow-ups. I feel your pain as a coordinator because to this day, I am still a coordinator. I am still in charge of doing this stuff. Like, subscribe, comment, share. That study startup in a nutshell, Guru Nation. Bye-bye.